Hey, welcome back to the ESPN NFL 2K5 franchise mode featuring the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are in week 16 out of 17, guys. So we only have two more games left in the regular season. Uh, we are currently 10 and 4. We're coming off a win. Uh, we're going to be playing the Houston Texans today, and this is a an important game. Uh, we played the Texans before, actually recently, and um, we got the win, but they are in the AFC South. But here's the thing that I would like to, to show you guys. Um, so we have the power rankings. We are currently fifth right now. Uh, and then after that, it's Seattle, San Francisco, Philadelphia Eagles, and Atlanta Falcons. Then we hit the playoff picture. Bam. Division title, guys. Division title. Like, what? Did we do that in the in year one? I think it's even in the emails. Let me check. Let me, uh, let's see. Front office. Da, 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 da. It was. It was. It's not there anymore. I, I'm pretty good about reading my emails. Anyways. <laughs> so, with that being said, it looks like we have clinched the division title. So, we are good. Um... I don't think we're going to have too many issues moving uh, forward in the regular season. We got two games back and guess what? Michael Vick's back. So hopefully we can uh, get him back into the system flow without any kind of hiccups or anything like that. But look, I've spent a lot of time talking. Thank you guys for the support. Let's get ready for some football. Today's video is the Houston Texans versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Aloha, I'm Chris Berman, and coming up on ESPN, ah, it's week 16 and another typically wild season of the NFL. Ho, ho, ho. The stockings are hung by the chimney with care. But which teams are going to find a playoff berth in their stocking? And which ones will find the dreaded cold? We'll see, but first, an interesting late season matchup for you on ESPN. Texans, Jaguars. Now! And look at all the happy tailgaters as they get set to cheer for the hometown team. Welcome to All Tell Stadium. I'm Dan Stevens. My buddy Peter O'Keefe is here by my side. Peter, an important game here. Home field advantage throughout the playoffs is on the line. And the players are ready to respond to the pressure. Would love to play in front of their fans in the postseason, Dan. To make that happen, they're going to need to establish the tempo of the game from the first snap. If they can do that, they'll get the W. And now let's go down to the coin toss. Tails it is. All right, guys. It's the return of Michael Vick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are facing an AFC South opponent, the Houston Texans. But this time we're playing them in Jacksonville. It's a beautiful December day. How coincidental that I'm recording this in December. Look, before we get started in this matchup, I want to say... Have a safe and happy holidays. I'm going to be saying that a lot here the next couple of recordings. And also, I hope that you guys' college football teams had a successful championship Saturday. I will be excited to see in the comments section who you guys follow in the NCAA and in the NFL. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and kick off. Chris Brown kicking off for the Jaguars. The ref gets the signal, and we're set. Brown kicks it off to begin the game. Womack downs this in the end zone for a touchback. Third down. Third down. Four yards to go. Oh, my gosh. 
How did he get so open? Look at look at that. Look at that. Look, he he just walked it in. Holy crap, that guy is fast. Who is 85? I I know we've had our problem with big plays, guys, but that came out of nowhere. Ashley Lee makes the catch and then Lee. Takes a great run here. Look at this. Now he's got it. If you give My him the God. Ball, he'll be happy to take it from you. Well, we have to watch out for 85, man. He Look, he, he even Beautiful just kind of chills it out. Chillman was burnt. Wow. Okay. Well, the Texans are here to play. Number 12. This tying up on defense. Here's the point after. The extra point is good. It's good. All right, so it's the return of Michael Vick. Hopefully, it's a swell welcoming. We're also starting 26 now as our running back. So, hopefully, we can get into a good flow here. You know, Dante's been doing really good. Hopefully, he can keep it up. Uh, I kind of wiggled there, guys. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So, we just... Scrambled it. Got three yards. Hopefully our guy... Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's go ahead and run it. Run a little hurry up. Ooh, what's the flag on? Can't be on us. Hey, I'll take it. That was, uh... That wasn't intentional. They didn't mean to... Call the no huddle. Okay, Ferguson, you can't, you can't do that, my guy. All right, maybe we should run some more no huddle. All right, Bell. Get the first. There we go, my guy. We had success with Bell. All right, I'm looking for our tight end. But I won't be against throwing it to anybody else. Okay, okay. Go ahead and scramble it. Get, get about eight yards. Yo, look, Wallace did a fantastic job, guys. He stepped up. He did what he needed to do as a backup. Um, I would like to keep him on the team just in case, man. You know, in case he wants to play that role. That's great. Um, I was going to see if we had something else, but I'm just going to roll with this. I feel like they're coming in for the run, though. Hey, as long as we get the first down, Bill. As long as we get the first down. But yeah, Wallace, he came in, did a fantastic job. We didn't really miss a beat. I think we only lost one game without Vic. But it is going to be interesting to uh, adjust to having Vic back. It's one of my favorite plays. We're looking for Dante Hall, who's been going off. Okay. Oh, and it just bounced. I threw it a little too hard, I guess. If we can let this develop, we could see a big play here. Maybe we can find Moss. Had to just throw it away. We're about to get sacked. I'm trying to reduce the sacks, but I'm also trying to reduce the uh, interceptions, obviously. Let's see if we can find ourselves a uh, first down. There you go, Michael. Good job. Ooh, good job. I didn't know if I want to say job or stuff. McMichael came in. Made a play there. Good stuff, 81. We rolled out. Look at that. Wide open, too. I wish we could get... I wish we could get those yards after catch, but man, one reception, 41 yards? That's what's up. We'll do the weak fullback dive with 34 here. Got a good drive here. Feeling pretty good. Ooh, I kind of rolled into the uh, the block there. Kind of ran straight into it. Could have got more yardage with that, but it's all good. So I'm seeing this uh, linebacker on the left side always looking like he's going to blitz. You can see it on the right as well. But I feel like 81 should be open if, all's, if all goes well. Okay. 
Okay, there you go. First and goal. There we go. Let's take that. Yeah, 23 touchdowns, 12 interceptions this year. I really don't want to throw any more picks, man. We need to tighten up as we get closer to the postseason. Oof. And we really got to get better with short yardages. Alright, we're going to do this. Alright, so I'm looking for triangle or circle here. Oh, wow. He was open. Oh, another Bullware. I never found out if Peter Bullware is related to our Bullware. Third and goal. Can we get in? I feel like they're going to be bringing... Look, they're all blitzing. Oh, I totally messed that up, guys. Peter Bullware was a one-man wrecking crew back there. He powered into the backfield and made the tackle. All right, here we go. So far. We're going to do 50 week flood. I'm going to be looking for some good blocking from our offensive line. Hopefully I can just scramble it in with Vic. Well, I bet we see the pass here. Right to his receiver. Oh, oh, there we go. Nice. And welcome back. Number seven to the Jaguars, my guy. I wanted to score on the first drive with him. A little, you know, housewarming gift. Almost messed up the scramble there. Ran into, I think, our left guard or center. But we still get it. Oh, yeah. I kind of freaked out because that defensive end crashed inside. But, okay. We needed that, man. We needed that. Especially with uh, Houston scoring so fast. I'm not sure if that's going to be a trend for them. So we get seven points on the board. Felt like that was a good drive. We get the PAT. Let's go. 13 plays, 76 yards, 420. Ha ha. Oh, so fumble. We get it. Nice. What's that behind the line? Bullware, bro. No way. Is that a... Oh, wow. I love it. Is that a light ball? Let's see. He threw it behind the line. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Are they... Yeah, that's not a turnover. Oh, they're challenging if the ball was passed backwards. I don't know now. Let's see from this angle. I didn't think he caught it and lost possession. Let's see what happens. Man, we've got to look at the pass itself. I mean, eh, it was it was it was, it was it was moving forward. They're gonna call that back. Happens to the call. Oh, if you ask me, after that's review, moving forward the play and an incomplete pass, and I therefore incomplete. This one. Houston will not be charged a timeout. All right, so we didn't get the fumble, but he likes the call and he's sort of had a what's the flag on now? Delay of game, offense. Wow. <laughs> okay. Texans can't catch a break here, man. Well, the knee holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion. That was a good call by the defensive coordinator. Oh, it sure was. Perfect D for that situation. And it will bring up fourth down. Nice job on the punt return there, Sanders. Stopped at the 47. Bob Sanders ran it back for us. That's been a really good uh, change for our special teams. Putting in Bob Sanders. Start this one on the center logo like I said, I wanted a dependable special teams returner. All right, let's go. Okay, okay. Four yards. Trying to follow our blocks a little bit more, you know. All right, let's do triple. Oh, all right. So it's time. Let's go into the second quarter. Keep the momentum going. All right, so we're going to do some rollout stuff. That was working a lot with Wallace. I want to see if we can get something going here with Vic. There you go, Luke. Way to find the open man there. I feel like those rollouts are there, man. 
Especially with Vic. If it's not, we can just run. Do a play action. Do a little space. Plant our feet. Well, we didn't really. It's a good throw. I forget that Vic's left-handed, though. He knew where he had to be. A beautiful pickup, Peter. Everyone on the offense is happy about that play. Definitely great call by the offensive right. coordinator. So we got Santana Moss. Bro, what a perfect dot there. Good catch, 83. Touchdown, Vic to Moss. Let's go. That was too easy. His coverage, man. The finer points of pass patterns, namely get Ooh, away from me. Right over 31. He really beat right, his first catch of the day. Got a touchdown. Yeah, he's just a great receiver, Love it. He knew where now, he I know Wallace, he, he came in. He did some good work. He, he actually had a really good arm on him as far as accuracy. We were able to uh, not miss a beat when it came to throwing the ball, but I want to bring that back with Vic. Vic's a better passer than I give him credit for and show through my gameplay but three plays 47 yards under a minute wow really quick good drive at the six yard line all right some great accuracy on his pump there let's get it going he landed it inside the 10 which will give this we gonna start off with a, a run okay four yards they'll begin at their own six yard line Bell takes it across the line of scrimmage and chews up about four on the play. Straight trips, straight trips. Larry. All right, so we're second and six. We're still kind of backed up, but I feel like we need to get some room. We're gonna do a little rollout here. Oh, it gets. Oh wow! Threw it a little too low. Jason just Ferguson got packed down. Quickly to bat the ball away. You know, for a guy who can eat two hams in one sitting, he's got killer. Let's get the first down here. On second down, they try for the first, but it's played well by the defense. That will bring up third down. Nice pressure that time. Third down and four wide outs in the game. Right. What? Why did Vic do this little hop? Did he get it? I don't know if he got it. We'll punt it if we don't get it. Oh, we got it. Nice. Okay. You didn't have to do all that, Vic. I wanted you to just slide, but I'll take that, my guy. We were backed up there. I was a little worried. There you go, Bell. Way to make a run out of nothing there, honestly. Didn't feel really confident about that. Let's get the run going here. Got the lead here. We'll get the ball back after halftime, too. Oh, man. 79. Got to do something, man. Tatum Bell just hasn't gotten into a groove and isn't finding running room any. All right. So we're on another third and seven. Let's see. Can I find us something that's going to work for us? Maybe. I, I really do like these rollouts. So I feel like they know we're going to throw it, but we can still throw it pretty short and maybe get the first down. But Okay, we'll, we'll take the two-minute warning. Maybe the defense will come out in something different. So was it strong? I think it was weak. I can take that. Yeah. Play action, rollout, strong flow. Third down, seven yards to go. We'll just we'll just take it to the house if we need to. Okay, they do blitz. Vic throws a to the right side. And it's complete at the 41. There you go. There we go. Nice! What a play! What a huge play! I don't think we've I, I went quiet there for a second. There we go, 83, baby. Man, these rollouts, man, they're open. Look at that. I just, I had to focus. I had to dial in. What a big play. We're usually on the other side of those. Let's get it. 102 yards for Moss off of two catches, and each one being a touchdown. As you can see, he's up over the century mark. Oh, he came to play. Let's go. 
off of a third and seven, I think that was. Third down either way. Okay. Six plays, 94 yards, under two minutes. Gonna do a little PA. See what we can get. They'll start at their own 28 yards. There you go, Moss. Go ahead, call a timeout since we were just right there over the middle. So we are on the right hash. First down, two wide outs. See what we can get. Got 57 seconds. I am looking for Moss again. Oh, they backed up. Let's just scramble. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, a little hurry up here. Oh, that was bad. Bad, bad, bad. I just wanted to stop the clock, if anything, man. I should have just ran out of bounds if I had to. All right, yeah, we can do these slants here. See, they're kind of playing deep. Not so much anymore. They kind of moved up. Okay, okay. There we go. There we go. Come on, hurry up. Hurry. All right, we're wasting too much time. Too much time. All right, so we're in field goal range, so we don't really have to do anything crazy, especially with us having the lead. There is a play I'm looking for. Yeah, here we go. Let's see. Does he move up? He does. So maybe we can find Moss. Oh, just didn't get... It wasn't a good throw. The second and ten. We still got some time. Let's see what we can get. Bro, let's go! Vic and Moss are on a wave right now. They are on the same wavelength. Look at this. Right before the sack. Ooh. They're inside. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There we go, defense. All right, guys. We're... We are winning in stride right now. It's 28 to 7. I'll tell you guys after halftime. The first half of this one. The Jaguars in command of this one. 28 to 7. And now let's send you to Chris Berman in our studios in Bristol for the ESPN halftime report. Boomer? All right, Dan, we'll get back to you in a bit. But welcome, everybody, to the ESPN Halftime Show. I'm Chris Berman. A look at our halftime stats here, and boy, look at the difference in passing yards. The Jaguars are winning because of it. Let's see if they can keep up their dominance in the second half. Let's get started in this one early in the first quarter. Ashley Lalee was definitely a key as he was able to work his way open for a big one here. A 74-yard touchdown for the Texans. The Texans strike first and go up by seven. The Jags trying to answer back. Michael Vick went to work as he would find his man for a big one. A 41-yard play that set up a Jaguar touchdown. The Jags later on in the second quarter, game tied, seven all. Michael Vick connected with his man on this one. Texans still in the second. Travis Henry would make the first guy miss, then he'd rip off a chunk of yardage here. Texans back, 14 to seven. Santana Moss emerged as a real weapon as he pulled one in here. An 81-yard touchdown for the Jaguars. The Jaguars move ahead by 14. The Jags laid into the second quarter, this time at the 31-yard line. Santana Moss makes him pay. He's running a deep route, and this ball is right where it needs to be. A 30-yard touchdown for the Jaguars. And that's where we'll leave this one. Jags are up big in halftime, 28-7. Today's halftime hero has turned in an incredible performance thus far. Santana Moss has been unstoppable. And now let's return to the second half with Dan Stevens and Peter O'Keefe. Thanks, Boomer, and welcome back to our broadcast presented in ESPN Game Sound. 
Designed and developed in collaboration with Dolby, the leader in surround sound technology. I hope you guys have Santana Moss and Michael Vick on your fantasy football teams. Because these guys are just connecting on a whole nother level. What a return uh, for Vick. Let's just keep it going, man. Hopefully this is something that we can expect uh, for each game to come. the second half kickoff away Sanders fields the second half kickoff at the six Left down at the 29 well Peterson are fading fast and are in need of a score their offense will start this vital drive at the 43 yard line there we go get a sack Erlacher we needed that man down the quarterback for the loss of a little yardage in a good job defense they put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage pretty good call by the defensive coordinator agreed Dan they, they had it all locked up that will bring up second down wow, they keep on doing these draws you know lose him because of it third and 14 Julius Peppers targeted the ball carrier Julius Peppers good job man back to the line of scrimmage nice job eliminating any forward progress on that play that will bring up All right. third and we got to stop a big play here stop the third down conversion goes in motion oh what i say oh no not the way i wanted to start this second half guys giving up these big plays matthew hatchet what happened oh they just they didn't do a good job defending it it's like if you if you're gonna let them catch it and then tackle them that's better <laughs> but all right, we're still up 28, 28-14. Let's get back out here. Texans obviously came out feeling a certain kind of way. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe Dante here on the play action. Maybe. Oh, all day. That was a little bit risky because I kind of threw it late because I was looking at Hall first. But hey, he caught it. I'm glad these guys are catching it. This man's got almost 200 yards. That's broken kind of a cold streak for him. The last two passes, his stays on track. There we go, Bell. Let's go! Big plays, guys. That is something we haven't had all year, all season. We've just been chipping at it. But look at that. Good job, Bill. Love to see it. Ooh, just kind of sticks close to his made it work. here. And it pays off. Peter, that will put a touchdown in. All right. The Texans Back out here on defense. And they are We're kind of either doing really good on offense or really bad. As they start this drive at the 40 yard line. Ooh, draws, man. They know we're playing the pass. First down, one man back. Pennington unloads this one to the left. Oh, no. For the first down okay, they're just going to start slinging it, huh? Oh, they get it just like that? Wow. I wish we could have stopped him. I, I went to cover 12 there. Just, they had it going, man. He's throwing it to the left side of the, the field right there. Like, what was 27 doing? All right, so Houston scores on us really quick, too. Three and a half minutes. Only down by, like, two scores. So they're going for the onside kick already. Guess that makes sense. They're setting up for the onside Gosh, kick. hopefully we get this. Brown it up. Okay, okay. There you go, Anderson. Get in there, 49. 
Courtney. The protection was uh, weak. So we're just going to go ahead and get the field goal, extend our lead. So we should be all right. If we make this, even if we don't, we still up by two scores. And they haven't let up all game. And that's what you want. Somebody whose motor never stops. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That was a bad kick. Bad kick. Damn. Bad. I didn't. I didn't get the power. So we missed the kick. Got less than two minutes. Ooh. Almost got the uh, something. They're looking for 85, man. They're going to go through the air. And if they're not, they're going to be just doing those... Uh, those little draws. But hopefully we... Oh, somebody make a play over there. I don't like giving up those things. Those catches. There you go, incompletion. receivers line up as the defense settles into the package. Pennington Oh McCree, good job, man. Yeah, that play action almost got me. I thought it was like a, another kind of draw. There you go. There we go. We got the stop. They're going to go for it. So I feel like this is a good opportunity to do some kind of blitz. There we go. Way to make a play. Good job, 2-7. And they turned it over, man. We should be able to just run it. Yeah, double coverage. Thankfully, somebody made a play. All right, guys. We get the dub. We get the win. I think this has been one of our most impressive offensive performances. 35 to 21, guys. I'll talk to you after the post-game show. Until next time. Okay, Dan, thank you very much. And let's welcome all of you back to the studio. I'm Chris Berman here to bring you our ESPN Video Games post-game wrap-up. The Jaguars stepped it up for sure, putting up some good numbers. Let's get started in this one early in the third quarter. Matthew Hatchett came up with a huge play here as they cover a lot of real estate on this one. A 61-yard touchdown for the Texans. The Texans trying to make something happen and are now down by 14. Michael Vick would find his target on this one. Jags out in front by 14. Tatum Bell is going to take this one to the outside. And once he gets the corner, hits a foot break. They've opened it up now and now lead by 21. The Texans answer right back. Chad Pennington would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. A 23-yard touchdown for the Texans. And that's where we'll leave this one. Jags win this one 35-21. Now let's check in with our player of the game, a guy who made one big time catch after another to help seal the win for his team. Santana Moss is standing by with our Susie Calvert. Susie? Thanks, Chris. You excelled under pressure today and you helped carry your team to a nice win. What gave you guys the edge today? Our offense was really in rhythm tonight, moving the ball well and putting points on the board. They were having a tough time stopping us. We just executed executed and executed the way we needed to win this game chris back to you thanks for tuning into espn the worldwide leader in sports for 25 years and counting i'm chris berman we'll see you next time yo what a monster of a performance by santana moss that man went off and Vic is back and i really liked what i saw from him we learned a lot without him with Wallace, and we had to kind of look around and see what we could do with play calling. Offensively, I think we've 
peaked. Hopefully, hopefully we can still improve. Obviously, we weren't perfect. We came out of the second half, I think, a little too overconfident and uh, started making, thankfully, not a lot of game changing mistakes, but we just were not doing what we were in the first half. It actually felt like the defense, like the Texans had made adjustments. So I don't know if that's uh, a part of 2K. I know that they do keep track of like your VIP uh, is like showing what your tendencies are, your play calling, things like that. So maybe there was some adjustments there, uh, but we still were able to pull out a 35 to 21 victory. Uh, defensively, we didn't get any turnovers. There was a fumble that ended up getting overturned. And then um, these big plays, those are going to come back to haunt us. Like, thankfully, we put up enough points offensively that we could actually give up 21 points. But, you know, as we get closer to the playoffs, as we enter the playoffs, we're going to play a lot better teams. And those teams are going to be hard to stop because they have playmakers. So we need to step up on the defensive side of the ball. But, man... I was just really happy that we had that kind of performance. I know passing has been my weakest uh, feature. It usually is. I usually have fun, you know, throwing the ball in other games, but I'm, I'm never uh, the best at reading things. I kind of force stuff at times, uh, you know, but I've been taking your guys' feedback in the comment section. So thank you for that. And just trying to take my time and improve every time I sit down to play. Uh, so, yeah, we got the win, guys. Uh, we're going to obviously end this video like we usually do against uh or with i almost said against uh with sports center right uh before we do that if you like espn nfl 2k5 content nfl football jacksonville jaguars any of these players franchise mode on any game please uh consider subscribing to the channel uh i've had the best time doing this series uh, we're gonna do plenty more um, I, I really do plan on keeping this franchise going for quite some time, um, along with trying some other things. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy all the content, the, the response to this series and the awesome people I've been able to interact with uh, is another reason why this game means a lot to me, because no matter... Yeah, it's 16 years old. It's been out since 2004, but people still enjoy this game and this kind of content. That's what's been really cool. Uh, so I appreciate the support. Like always, though, let me know how I can improve the presentation and also how I can improve our gameplay as we enter the playoffs. I know we're going to be looking at offseason stuff. I will be doing a live stream of the offseason. I'm going to go ahead and announce that now. Uh, that will probably be more than likely... Depending on the time of this recording versus when these are releasing and the holidays, uh, it might be before the new year, so before the end of December. So depending on when you watch this uh, series, the live streams are still available. Like We still have the draft that we did and the preseason games available to watch if you want to. They're long videos, obviously, but um, I still want to make sure that whatever, whatever we do with this team, you guys can be a part of. So... Thank you for the support. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it with friends and family. Other than that, guys, um, enjoy Sports Center. Stay safe. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Hey, I'm Chris Berman. Got a lot of games to cover. Let's get at it. In our first game this week, we had the Packers edge their way to a narrow three-point win. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Patriots win their ninth game of the year. The Panthers won this contest and will now move to second place in the NFC South. We had a big injury in this one, and Trey has the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Chris, thanks. In front of you, we've got the AFC Infirmary Report. And as you can see, they were hit hard this week. Julian Peterson will be on the sidelines for a while, so this defense will need to do some reshuffling in his absence. Doctors confirming the worst this week, a torn hamstring, and that'll put him out for the rest of the regular season. In front of you, we've got the NFC list, and as you can see, they could form their own mash unit. Rod Gardner sticks out on this list as one of the more costly injuries. 
Doctors confirming the worst this week, a torn hamstring. And that'll put him out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. Now, on to even bigger news, as you may have already heard. This guy had to be placed on injured reserve, so he'll be on the sidelines for the rest of the year. Just a key blow to the heart of this defense. Now we'll move on to our top story of the day. Terrell Owens is going to find himself in street clothes for the time being, and that'll be a major blow to this club. So that'll do it for now. Chris, let's send it back to you. Curtis, my favorite, Martin, played well despite the loss and showed us why he's ranked up at the top of the league. Rudy Johnson ran to pay dirt three times and helped his Colts beat the Chargers. Raiders, Chiefs. Heinz Ward is always a guy to look for when you're at the 10 yard line as they are right now. Here's the snap, the lob, touchdown. The Chiefs go on to win this by the final score of 24 to 13. Deep in Cajun country in New Orleans, we had the Saints stroll away with a 14 point win. Over at Paul Brown Stadium, we had the Bengals squeak to a one point victory. The Cowboys erupted for 400 plus offensive yards in their victory at Texas Stadium. The Lions won at home, but will take to the road next week to meet the Titans. The Browns won this contest, but will stay at the second place in the AFC North. Ravens, Steelers, Ravens. Charlie Garner wants to get his team inside field goal range. Gets the handoff at the 42. Oh, he may do more than that. He shakes two. He could go all the way. Touchdown. The Ravens win this one by the final score of 31 to 14. In an AFC South matchup, we had the Jaguars pick up their 11th win of the year. The Seahawks win yet again this week and keep their impressive streak alive. Todd Uriah Heap hauled in over 150 yards receiving and helped his Bills beat the 49ers. And in our final game, we had the Rams come away victorious. So let's change things up a bit and turn to a guy that's had his eye on the college game, and that's our own Mel Kuyper Jr. He joins us now. Mel, your work never ends, I know. Believe me, I know better than anybody else. But it's never too early to start thinking about next year's draft, is it? Well, you're absolutely right. And with the college bowl season upon us, a lot of guys view their upcoming bowl game as more or less an open audition for NFL scouts everywhere. Man, is one guy I look at has come a long way the past couple of years to be where he is now. 5'10", 210, out of Clemson. And this is someone that I've had my eye on for a while now. He's one of the best hitters in the draft and also possesses great football knowledge, the kind of which it's often hard to teach. He's a natural back there. Carr is another guy that's starting to make some noise with a terrific senior season. He was a virtual unknown coming into this year, but people are starting to project him to have a solid NFL career. I'm starting to jump on the bandwagon as well. So that'll do it for now, but expect there to be plenty happening between now and April. Yes, indeed. Just one week to go, and the playoff picture's starting to take shape. But still some areas that'll need to be cleared up next weekend. We'll start with a look at the AFC playoff picture. Meanwhile, over in the NFC, the playoff picture looks like this. So there you have it, still plenty of intrigue left in this NFL season as the home stretch madness is only just beginning. So that'll do it from here. Boomer, we send it back over to you. And that'll do it here for Pivotal Week 16. As always, good. You have surprises to go around and plenty of intrigue still to come. My primetime players each took his team to the next level and each is going to take home a game ball. Great work, fellas. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studios. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul. Wonder Soul.